Good afternoon. I welcome all of you to the Gabelli School of Business Award Ceremony for the class of 2023 at the Lincoln Center campus. I'm Father Vin DeCola and I serve as Assistant Dean and Coordinator of the Gabelli Business Program at the Lincoln Center campus. I would like to note that today's ceremony is being streamed for friends and family who could not attend in person. I also want to thank all of the members of the faculty and administration who have come to be with us today. And we're honored to have with us the Dean of Students, Dr. Jennifer Campbell, who I am pleased to now invite forward to lead us in an opening prayer. Good afternoon and congratulations. Okay. Maybe bow our heads, please. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life and for the wonderful privilege of knowing you. Today is the culmination of years of work, years filled with challenges and triumphs, losses and laughter, friendships and growth. We thank you, God, for getting us safely to this day. Lord, at this time of graduation, we bring before you all these young lives that will soon be graduating. Lead and guide all these, all those, excuse me, that are called and protected by you. Bless them with hope so that they move into the future with eager and open hearts. Help them to put the knowledge, skills, and insights gained through their education to use for the good of all humankind. Inspire them to believe in the goodness of life, even when faced with challenges and difficulties. God, we pray that each one remains firm in their truth and in the ability to utilize the critical thinking skills they have been taught throughout their time here at Fordham. May each one continue to grow and discern as they continue to mature and become richer in their relationship with you with each passing day. As life opens up before each one and the temptations of the world seek to entice them away from the road of righteousness, hold each one steady. May your Holy Spirit be ever more present. Help them in times of trouble and in ever present comfort in times of difficulty. Thank you for each life and each family that is represented by these young adults who are soon to graduate. As they commence with their lives, may they grow even more grateful and wise. May their lives be a wonderful witness to all those with whom they come in contact. Keep them safe from harm and in the palm of your precious hands, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Campbell. And now we will hear from a member of the class of 2020, Grace Oakey. Grace was named by Poets and Quants as one of this year's best and brightest from colleges across the entire country. Is Grace really the brightest? Well, I don't exactly know, but she is pretty darn smart, and she works pretty darn hard. Is Grace really the best? Again, I can't say, but I can tell you this, and I say it sincerely. She certainly is a truly fine person, and with that, I suspect you all agree. Grace. Just about four years ago, sitting at orientation amongst a crowd of what was mostly strangers at the time, we listened to a motivational speaker that the university had brought to cultivate excitement and ease the anxieties that each of us felt as we embarked into the unknowns of the kickoff of our college experience. 
Most memorable for myself during this talk, the speaker called on me, perhaps the only time in my life that I've been individualized randomly from within a very large audience, to share my goal of my dream job at some distant number of years into the future. Unsurprisingly, while my response to that prompt four years ago is not too related from what it would be today, the difference is material enough that makes reflecting on that evolution of my perspective and passions especially satisfying. While I could look back on this and laugh at how relatively little I knew then compared to today, as I'm sure some others here could as well, while reflecting on their own freshman self's goals relative to what they are now, there's a certain beauty in taking a moment to recognize the steps along the journey to the distinct identities we carry today. For some of us, these identities may be drastically different, while for others, they may simply resemble more mature, informed, experienced, and knowledgeable versions of our 2019 selves. The opportunities that Fordham provided us with and the skills with which we became equipped throughout our undergraduate journey enabled growth that spanned the academic, spiritual, and mental aspects of ourselves. Ensuring our degrees this weekend represent a milestone whose meaning extends well beyond the academia of the classroom. Also during the motivational speaker event at orientation, not long after I announced my career goal to an audience of over hundreds of people, another student was selected as a volunteer to come stand next to the speaker. But rather than reveal any personal goals, he was instructed by the speaker to call his father on speakerphone while on stage. In what was seemingly supposed to be an uncomfortable experience for him, this student, Kevin Duffy, was instructed to call his father and tell him he loved him. The point being, the speaker explained, to tell the people we love that we love them. It shouldn't be so difficult or seem so uncomfortable or embarrassing to verbally express our love for others as we can't take for granted the people we have in our lives today. A message underscored all too well by the pandemic that would disrupt our lives just a semester after orientation, as well as by our class's devastating loss of Tessa Burns last year. A warm, genuine, and loving individual without whom our class is not the same. Complementing Fordham's principle of cura personalis, which encourages care for the other person, our orientation speaker underscored the essentialness of the expression of our love for those closest to us, highlighting an urge by an urgency resulting from the lack of certainty in anything beyond the present moment. And so, today, as we reflect on the difficulties we shared, whether as trivial as the struggle of squeezing just one more person into a Lowenstein elevator to make it to class on time, or as monumental as world events like the pandemic, we can duly appreciate the immense growth achieved through struggle and acknowledge the vital role that every individual in the class of 2023 mutually played in molding each other during this time. We have all affected a substantive impact on each other's development in part due to the unique college environment in which we have spent the last four years, but doubly so from Lincoln Center's smaller population, which has enabled an especially deep interconnectedness amongst us. As we part ways and each of us continues our journeys down paths in many different directions, the interconnections established amongst us will endure in exerting their influence, even if in less obvious or tangible ways. But while we are still physically together now, let us continue to recognize and to verbally express the appreciation we have for each other and the very attributes that shape the distinct identity of the class of 2023. Thank you. Great job, Grace. Best, brightest, and also quite articulate. We are seriously very proud of Grace, who will be working at Blackstone here in New York as a real estate private equity analyst starting in July. And now I'm honored to call forward the Dean of the Gabelli School of Business, Dean Lerzon Aksoy. Thank you, Father Vin. I uh, want to wish you all a very warm Fordham Gabelli School welcome. I am so thrilled to be here um, to honor our exemplary Gabelli School 2023 graduates. Each person that's being recognized today has demonstrated excellence in ways that have clearly stood out to our faculty, to our staff, to our administrators, and of course, to your families. We are all so proud of you. This time of celebration is, is very special for me. 
it is a reminder of how incredible our students are and makes clear to me that the best days will always be in front of us with leaders such as these exemplary future Gabelli School of Business alumni leading the way. Recognizing that you represent the best of Fordham and the embodiment of our hopes for the future, I spent a lot of time contemplating what I should say to you today. You've already spent many years absorbing and applying your knowledge. You have brought the best of yourselves to your studies and to the way you lead your lives as people for others. So above all else, I would ask that you to continue to bring your best selves to all of that, all that you do. Of course, give your best to your work. But remember to also give your best selves to your passion for new knowledge, to your development of wisdom, and to your contribution to building the world that you want to see. But most importantly, remember to give your best selves to those who love and support you regardless of your failings, because it is those relationships that will sustain you throughout your life's journey. So, Grace, I agree with you. You are clearly used to succeeding and winning, that's why you're here today. While I have no doubt that you will succeed and win, you most definitely will not win every single battle. There may even be times when you find yourself doubting if your dreams are worth the struggle. It will seem all the more difficult when you see others abandoning decency and honesty for personal gain and financial gain. During those times, it is important to remember that there is no gain worthy of losing your soul. The good news is that if you don't quit, you keep pushing forward while staying true to your values, you will win. Yes, it will require hard work and sacrifice, but your ultimate success will not only benefit you, it will forge a path that others can and will follow. So, on, On behalf, behalf of all of us here at the Gabelli School, School I, extend I extend our warmest, warmest congratulations to you for this recognition, recognition on your graduation, and on a job well done. done. Go, Go forth and change the, the world. Congratulations, congratulations class, class of 2023. 2023. Thank you, Dean Axoy, for those insightful and inspiring words. And now let us begin acknowledging some of the many accomplishments of this class of 2023. First, we recognize students who were invited and who joined one of the academic honor societies. For each honor society, as I call the students' names, I ask the students to stand and remain standing. After all the new members of that particular society have been called, we can all acknowledge them with our applause. Alpha Mu Alpha, the National Honor Society of the American Marketing Association. Caitlin Bayless, Szechuan Kevin Fay, Dan Fujiwara. Ben Grams is currently attending the ceremony for the uh, um, ROTC. Jerry Kim, Jarui Raymond Lee, Maggie Sablish. Let's congratulate them. Beta Gamma Sigma, Sigma, the exclusive business honor society, recognizes academic excellence in business studies. Gabriel Ebrecht, Dean Gall, Matthias Lee Poi Paxman, Jarui Raymond Lee, Ruby Wise. Let's congratulate them. Phi Kappa Phi, the nation's oldest, largest, and most selective honor society for all academic disciplines. Amin Belazny, Zara Figliozzi, Giarui Raymond Lee, 
Terrence Liu, Catherine Spurl, Ruby Weiss. Let's congratulate them. <laughs> Alpha Sigma Nu, the honor society of Jesuit universities, which recognizes students who excel in scholarship, loyalty, and service, and who, we hope, will promote Ignatian values all of their life. Jarui Raymond Lee, Alexander J. Rivera, Arham Sheik. I now invite Dean Silver to take the center stage and prepare to distribute some of our awards. And I invite forward Ms. Eileen Casey, career advisor in finance for our personal and professional development team, known as PPD. Eileen will assist Dean Silver in presenting the maroon, yellow, and white cords to those students who were in one of the three scholars programs run by our PPD or Career Advising Center, and in this case, the first finance scholars from the class of 2023, who were Nicholas Brinkworth, Julia Dabrowska, Alex DeVito, Iwan Michelle Doe, Dean Gall, Akira Komiya, Matthias Lee Poi Paxman, Willie Lee, Nandana Nair, Julie Ngo, Brian Jackson, Grace Oki, Alexandra Zabo. And I now call forward Professor Jen O'Neill, who will assist Dean Silver in awarding the honors to the marketing scholars from the class of 2023. Caitlin Bayless. <laughs> Angela Chan. Jarui Raymond Lee. Maggie Sablich, <laughs> Lieben Aga, Jerry Kim. And a few members of the class of 23 were the first to join what has grown into our third scholars program for students in digital media and technology. Those pioneers in DMT from the class of 23 were Jenny Bocchicchio, <laughs> Alicia Shelfo, and Crystal Zhang. I now call forward Dean Brian Dunn, 
to assist Dean Silver. Brian is the Assistant Dean for Honors Opportunities and Director of Advising at Rose Hill. We will now be awarding medals to the students in the Global Business Honors Program and the Ignite Scholars Program. As we call each student forward, I will also read the title of their thesis paper or final project. First from Global Business Honors Program, James Gronier. Greenwashing versus sustainability facts. What speaks louder to consumers? Sophia Kriz. <laughs> Celebrity versus influencer. Effects of social media campaigns on consumer perception. Grace Oakey. Connections between American regional economic factors and mortgage facility facilitated home ownership investment. Yajunaida Torialba. The Corporate Financial Repercussions of an Executive Sexual Harassment Allegation. Michelle Lai. <laughs> the Impact of ESG News on Healthcare Films Firms Financial Returns. And I point out that Michelle is also a winner, and this is determined by program faculty, a winner of the E. Gerald Corrigan Thesis Award given for thesis excellence in the Global Business Honors Program. <laughs> now from the Ignite Scholars Program. Amin Belazny and Nicholas Brinkworth. A Green Hydrogen Future for Morocco. Alex DeVito. Shadow Me, Experience is Everything. Jerry Kim. Building Community with South Korean Independent Bookstores. And Erin Long. <laughs> the Finance Factor, Relaying Personal Finance Through Media. Arham Sheik. <laughs> Azadi, Freedom. Shubi Shukla. Perry Vallon, Sustainable Fashion Platform. Alexandra Zabo, who is, I think, working already. Equi Recruit. And we also recognize one additional senior who chose the option of writing an honors thesis paper, Alicia Shelfo. Power Law Modeling of Investor Purchases. I now call forward Maria St. Hilaire to assist Dean Silver. We wish now to recognize eight members of the senior class who have, for almost four years, served as members of the Dean's Council at Lincoln Center. The Dean's Council assists us in the administration in always trying to make the Gabelli School ever more effective in its goals. They also frequently represent the school to prospective students, and each summer assist me in advising the incoming class of first-year students. Perhaps most importantly, 
They also help in hosting, once each semester, our Gabelli Lincoln Center Dumpling Day Party. <laughs> so teal colored cords will distinguish our LC Dean's Council members. Caitlin Bayless. <laughs> Gabrielle Ebrecht. <laughs> Nina Ferreira. <laughs> Jerry Kim. <laughs> Sophia Kriz. <laughs> Beza Osgul. Ying Ying Chan, <laughs> Melanie Stuhlman. And now we wish to recognize a select group of the members of the class of 2023. The Majus Award is given for outstanding academic achievement in each of the primary concentrations to students who also demonstrated exceptional positive impact as members of the Gabelli School community. Would Professor Robert Chang, Area Chair of Info Technology and Operations, please join Dean Silver to present maroon white cords to the Majus winners in digital media and technology. Gabrielle Ebrecht. <laughs> Charissa Fernandez. <laughs> Sophia Kriz. <laughs> Crystal Zhang. And would Professor Malafite please come forward? He is faculty advisor for global marketing with Consumer Insights. And will join Dean Silver to present maroon and white cords to the Majus winners in global marketing. Caitlin Bayless. <laughs> Nina Ferreira. <laughs> Jerry Kim. Jarui Raymond Lee, Maggie Sablich, Melanie Stuhlman. And Professor McCann, faculty advisor for global finance and business economics, please come forward to join Dean Silver to present maroon and white cords to Majus winners in the global finance concentration. Manuel Jericho Bantigue. <laughs> Amin Balazni. <laughs> Hussein Chebli. Devinder Dhaliwal is already working. Sha <laughs> Shaquille Kamta. Akira Komiya. Michelle Lai. Grace Oki. Alexander J. Rivera. And Alexandra Zabo.
And would Dean Daly please come forward and assist Dean Silver in awarding the Hominis Pro Alis Award, green and yellow cords, to these members of the class of 2023, show their distinction as women and men for others. Jenny Bocchicchio. Charlotte Candler. Zara Figliozzi. Ben Grams is at the ROTC Awards. Ricky Carnaby. Willie Lee. Arul Molin. Nandana Nair. Julie Ngo. Beza Ozgul. Ying Ying Chan. John Robina. Jacob Roberto. Alicia Shelfo. Yajinaida Torialba. And I now invite Dean Axoy to join Dean Silver. We now take a moment to turn from the class of 2023 themselves to join them in recognizing two faculty members identified by many of the students as exhibiting Cora Personalis <coughs> in both their work in the classroom and also their care of the students outside the classroom. They have shown our students great care for the entire person and have assisted students to develop professionally and personally. The Faculty Core Personalis Award in 2023 goes to two professors. Professor Mark Conrad. Mark, Mark Conrad directs the Sports Business Concentration and is an Associate Professor of Law and Ethics at Fordham University's Gabelli School of Business. In addition to teaching sports law and, business, and the business of, and ethics of sports, he also has taught courses covering contracts, business organizations, and media law. Professor Conrad's books and articles have appeared in academic, legal, and general circulation publications. The third edition of his book, The Business of Sports, Off the Field, In the Office, On the News, was published by Rutledge in 2017. Prior editions have been cited in leading journals as among the most comprehensive texts on the subject. Professor Conrad has been quoted in the New York Times, Boston Globe, Chicago Tribune, and has appeared on CNN and Bloomberg TV. He holds a BA from City College of New York, a JD from New York Law School, and also received an MS from Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism. He enjoys both attending New York Yankees, Knicks, and especially Rangers games, as well as performances <laughs> at the Metropolitan Opera. Thank you. We also recognize Professor Ken Davis. <laughs> Kenneth Davis earned a BA in psychology at the State University of New York at Binghamton and an MA in psychology from the University of California at Long Beach, from which he graduated with honors. He attended the University of Toledo College of Law, where he was a published editor of the Law Review, and again graduated with honors. After receiving his JD, he served as law clerk to Matthew Jason, former associate judge of the New York State Court of Appeals, and then as senior law clerk to Saul Wachler, that court's former chief judge. As a senior litigation attorney at Parker, Chapin, Plateau, and Klimple, Professor Davis acquired more than a decade of in-the-trenches legal experience, handling and supervising a broad range of federal and state court cases. A former lead guitarist in a rock band, and a published writer of fiction, Professor Davis is a golf enthusiast, an avid reader, and a devoted Yankee fan who
who tries to remember that Red Sox fans are people too. <laughs> These Truth two is they are not. <laughs> <laughs> These two professors, Professor Davis, Professor Conrad, together both teach one of the required courses in business law, and so between them have taught pretty much every member of the class. Before we conclude with our last three awards, I want to take a moment for some logistical details. First, there are some light refreshments just outside here in Platt Court. Ooh, I missed the pictures. There we go. <laughs> so uh, we, here we are in McNally, and just outside here at Platt Court, there are some refreshments to be enjoyed. So please stay around for a while and enjoy each other and celebrate our class. Feel free to take a photo near any of the flags that may hold particular meaning for your family. I will apologize now for Deans Axoy, Silver, Dunn, and Daly, who need to rush back up to Rose Hill for another award ceremony starting at 3 p.m. this afternoon. At 5 p.m., <laughs> there will be a baccalaureate mass across the street at the Church of St. Paul. And then finally, Tonight at 6.15 is a family reception on the second floor of the law school building. Each student was offered three free tickets available through the Senior Week events. I hope many of you plan to attend this evening. Now, we turn our attention again to our graduates. You have all accomplished so much and deserve all of the many congratulatory wishes you will be hearing these days from your family and friends. Let me say personally that I admire you for the way you managed through a couple of very difficult years right in the middle of your college career. I applaud you in a special way for your perseverance and flexibility. These are traits which will serve you well in the years ahead. We now conclude with three final awards. First is our Global Citizen Award. This year, it is given to an international student who has really become immersed in a positive way in our American culture and has demonstrated a desire and ability to build bridges of acceptance and understanding across cultures. The Gabelli School of Business Global Citizen Award to Jerry Kim. Next is the Dean's Award, which recognizes a student who has demonstrated a commitment to the Fordham community and has exemplified the spirit of leadership called forth in a Jesuit education. A leader who unites others behind a common cause to accomplish goals that could not otherwise be attained. This class has demonstrated a lot of great leadership, but this year's Dean's Award winner may not be the first to come to mind because this student might best be described as a quiet leader who leads by example, setting an example through hard work, steady reliability, despite the challenges life can throw at you. I do think everyone who knows this student will be very pleased because this student is so universally liked by all who have had the privilege to know him. The 2023 Dean's Award to Hussein Chebley.
The final award is called the Alumni Chair Award. Can you figure out where it is? <laughs> now I invite to come forward Tracy Schwartz, Assistant Director of Alumni Relations for New York City Programming. Good afternoon and congratulations, class of 2020. 2023. The Alumni Chair Award is presented to a senior who inspires their peers, who achieves excellence in intellectual and extracurricular endeavors, and who makes contributions that will outlast one's time as an undergraduate. Above all, the award is presented to an individual who embodies the Jesuit tenets of Cura Personalis and Magis, as well as the commitment to serve as a ram for and with others. But it does not stop at commencement. The award is a symbol of leadership, and we challenge the recipient to do more, to take up a leadership role in the alumni community as a member of our Young Alumni Committee or part of our regional and affinity chapters, as a mentor to current students, and above all, as a servant leader among peers and a model of unwavering devotion and service to their alma mater Fordham. In consultation with the Dean and on behalf of the Fordham University Alumni Association and Fordham's community of more than 200,000 living alumni, I commend and congratulate this year's recipient of the Gabelli Lincoln Center Alumni Chair Award, Caitlin Bayless. Chair. <laughs> you take the chair and sit.